Okay, we're back. So uh, this is a continuation of the discussion of the magnetic levitation apparatus. Um, as we left off in part three, we had the setup of the, uh, the simulation. Well, we didn't run it yet. So let me, let me pick up where we left off. Here's the simulation for magnetic levitation. And if you didn't see part three, you're a little, probably a little confused, but we have um, the dynamics of the coil here. So here's the voltage applied to the coil, and I call that E-bar. Um, we have uh, 1 over the inductance. We integrate that, and that gets that's the current. And here's the current, the voltage drop across the resistors, uh, subtracting away from, from the, um, the applied voltage. Down here is the dynamics of the, the ball itself. So here's the acceleration, integrate to the velocity, integrate to the position. Here's gravity pulling the bar, the ball down, and this is the um, the nonlinearity. So there's the current divided by the position, and then we square that ratio, multiply it times k sub i over m, and we complete the simulation. And that, one of the things I pointed out last time was that I didn't put the parameter values themselves in the simulation. I, I represented them symbolically. I'm using variable names from the MATLAB workspace. So for example here under this with this voltage drop across the resistance lies I put in RC plus RS, the two sum of the two resistances. And and in the initial conditions I put in symbols to represent the initial conditions. Variable names, V0 in this case. So what I wanted to do and what I had to do between filming these two lectures was write a script that I can run in MATLAB before I run the simulation. And so um, here's a MATLAB script file. Uh, and that's as opposed to a function. If, you, if you've got some background in MATLAB, you know there's two kinds of M files you can write. You can uh, write a function which uh, takes arguments and returns a value, or just a script which is like memorizing a bunch of lines that will repeat any time you invoke the script. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm not really passing along variables and returning other values. Uh, and so I'm just defining the parameter values here and using values that I actually looked up in the manual for the magnetic uh, levitation apparatus. So the coil resistance is 10 ohms. Um, the R sub S is called the shunt resistor, the discrete resistor in parallel. That's 1 ohm. Inductance is 0.4124 Henry's and so on. So these are all the values. And then I said, okay, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to run the simulation for the ball at 7 millimeters. So it means it's suspended below the, the actuator coil by 7 millimeters with no velocity. And I calculate a corresponding value of current and applied voltage uh, that, that corresponds to equilibrium. Now this is important, and, I'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into this in just a second, but here we have... Um, uh, a current, well, what I did was I solved that Newton's law equation that we had for the ball, which was that the acceleration is equal to gravity minus the electromagnetic force. I, I found the steady state version of that, which is just set the acceleration to zero. So I said, at seven millimeters, and x is seven millimeters, what's the value of current that creates exactly the same force as the gravitational force? In other words, what causes equilibrium here? And, and this is the equation for that. And then what's the voltage that when there's no inductance, when there's no rate of change of the current, what's the voltage that corresponds to that current? And you see that that's just the voltage drop across the, the two resistors. So if we go into MATLAB now, and I call that maglev init, and I didn't put semicolons behind any at the end of any of those statements, and so it got echoed to the screen. And I kind of liked that. So here's 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 what we see at the end of that script running. X0 is 0 0.007, V00. So the corresponding current is one amp, just a little bit, 1.005 amps. And that corresponding voltage is 11.0055 volts. Now let's go back to that simulation now. And I'm, I'm only running for six tenths of a second, so let's run it. I didn't hear it go bunk. I think I don't have my speakers on at the moment. So this is the uh, the scope for that. And this is very interesting. Look what happened here. So here's 
the scale here, 7 times 10 to the minus 3. So it's pretty much what we'd expect. Um, so it's starting at 7. Now, I'm not doing anything. It should be at equilibrium. So it should be the straight line. But somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5 seconds, it takes off and starts dropping, which means it's going closer. It's moving up to the coil. Now, it's not moving much. It's still it's just a couple hundredths of a millimeter in that period of time. But boy, that you know, it's ended at 0.6 seconds. It looks like it's going to start moving pretty fast. What's happening here? This is at equilibrium. There's no other forces. This shouldn't happen. This is not what the physics would tell us. Um, I su suspect it's a numerical problem. It's a round-off error. And the easiest way to verify that is to, is to uh, go into those parameter um, run control things that we've, we had seen earlier under the little gear and say, okay, yeah, my relative tolerance is pretty low. Let's, let's tighten that up. Let's make it 10 to the minus 6 like I did with the spring mass damper. Run it again. There's my bunk. And that's interesting. We got pretty much the same response here. Um, so it's not the solver. However, uh, what we're seeing here is an example of why it's very difficult to simulate uh, systems that are inherently unstable or metastable. And let, you know, let's just think about the physics of this problem for a moment. If we have no control, in other words, we're not, we haven't done any feedback on this thing yet. We just now we know the ball hanging uh, under the under the magnet. There's an equilibrium point where that magnetic force perfectly counteracts the gravity. Now imagine it gets disturbed just a little bit, even a little bit up or a little bit down. What happens? Well, what happens is if it's a little bit below that that seven, exact seven millimeter spot, it just falls to the ground. It drops because the gravity exceeds the electromagnetic force, there's no way to bring it back. If it's a little bit above, it goes, snaps up and goes click and gets stuck to the bottom of the, of the coil because the gravity is not enough to counteract it. And so when we set up our simulation, we set up the initial conditions to the best accuracy of the computer. The, the, you know, it's it's uh, the old-fashioned old Fortran four double precision. And that's not perfect. There's a small error in there. And what happens is, that error in this case is a little bit to the side of 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 pulling it up to the to the um, to the coil. It just takes a few takes some time for that little error to build up and integrate over time, and then it it, it runs away and it snaps up. So um, so even though the simulation looks fairly uninteresting, it's doing exactly what we've told it to do. And what we really want to do next is say, okay, how do I measure, let's say I've got some way of measuring X, how can I use that information and feed it back and command it to a specific location in space and say, oh, no, I wanted it 7 millimeters, no, I wanted it 20 millimeters and have it moving around under our control. How do we do that? Um, and that's, that's a control system problem, and that's what we're doing in this course. What makes this an interesting control system problem is that it's highly nonlinear. Uh, the Laplace transform tools, transfer function, state space, all those neat tools you used don't apply until we linearize this problem. So that's what we have to do. We have to linearize it. And that's what we're going we're gonna to do. We're going to spend some time in class doing that. Um, or maybe I'll run it as a, um, a case study. But that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to cover in, uh, in this lecture. It's a little shorter than most. Um, something's telling me there was something else I wanted to do, but I can't remember now what it was. No, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, there was. There was one more. Um, I mentioned here this, this series of blocks that, that uh, where, we, where we implemented the nonlinearity of our simulation. I mentioned there's other ways to do it. Let's look at one other way to do it. Let's look at a different version. So this is maglev v2. Um, you see that the top and the bottom look very much the same. Here's the, the coil dynamics. Here's the all dynamics. But here I replaced those two blocks with a single block. I still have Ki over M. I kind of like that separately here. But this is the block that implements the I over X quantity squared. And, and I've got a, this thing called a multiplexer, which is, shows up in one of the libraries. Let me show you the library it shows up in. So if you go to S 
signals and routing. Yeah, so there's this thing called the multiplexer. There's also a demultiplexer. And what it does is it, if you have multiple signals, multiple variables you want to pass to a single block, this is the way you do it. If you double click on this, you can actually give it any one of a number of, you can have it, you know, two or three or ten different signals going in. By default, it's two, and that's what we wanted. This is the FCN block. Again, let's go to the library browser, browser, um, user defined functions is the library, and it's this block right here, the, F, the FCN block. When you double click on this, you see you can put any MATLAB interpretable exp expression, anything that you could put in to your command line in MATLAB, you can put on this line. And the variables that are coming in to this block here are the ones that, that pass through here. So if it's the top of the demultiplexer, that's the first variable. The next one is the second, and so on. So this would be seen here as u of 1. The second line is u of 2. u of 1 is current. u of 2 is position. And so you see I've programmed this in here as current divided by position quantity squared. So I did this whole thing with just a, a simple mathematical expression in this dialog box. I could think of two or three other ways we can do this, uh, but it can leave that for you as we as we move further along. Um, trust me, this works exactly the same way as it did before. I've tried it out, and that works just fine. So, um, yeah, we're going to leave it at that, and uh, we'll see you on Wednesday.